coherence and we saw this tremendous changes in, in a, a people's ability to be able to sustain a state of mind, a feeling in their heart for an extended period of time. We have data to show you could be sick and do that, you could be a vegetarian and do that, you could be a carnivore and do that, you could be rich, you could be poor, and it doesn't, if you're skinny, overweight, doesn't matter. Once you learn that skill of self-regulation and being able to experience a greater level of wholeness, that if you can create from wholeness instead of separation or lack, you can produce greater effects on the nature of reality. People in our work come for a lot of reasons, you know, and yes, uh, they have challenges and health conditions. But instead of wanting to heal, I want them to learn the formula on how to heal. I want them to learn the formula on how to create reality. I want them to learn the formula that there is a door to other dimensions that they can create independent of any exogenous substance and release latent systems in the brain it causes them to realize they're not a linear being living a linear life. They're a dimensional being living a dimensional life and it only takes one of those experiences where you have an alteration in your identity that you can't go back to being the same person again. I give people numerous opportunities to get beyond themselves, numerous opportunities to connect with themselves. I want them to get frustrated. I want them to get impatient. I want them to get overly analytical because that's the end of their belief. And then finally, when they finally make up their mind to let go and just do it, and they run into that feeling, they run into that experience, they're all in. It's that they, that you think, they, you think they, they don't want a sports car anymore. They don't want, they want that, whatever that was. And if it comes with a transcendental moment, when they come back to their senses from that inner experience, their spectrum of reality is broadened. They're seeing things they had never seen before because their brain wasn't wired to see it, but it didn't come from the environment, it came from their inner environment. That transcendental moment now is producing a feeling, a frequency that is so unusual, it's so much joy so much bliss, so much ecstasy. I've watched people have to stop it because it's way bigger than them. Now, I would consider that a good problem to have. You measure that person's immune system. You measure the changes in their heart rate variability. Not a little amplitude, huge amplitudes. That person is feeling a lot of love. And imagine it's a man. Imagine a man whose heart is open that wide. They, they sob with, with the freedom to be able to not care what they look like. We're trying to fit into some paradigm or mold. So then, a new consciousness in that footprint is emerging, and we have scientific evidence. I can tell you can make your brain work better in a week. You can make your heart more coherent. You can change the field around your body. You can strengthen your immune system. You can change your gene expression. You can lengthen your life. You can create so many oxidative changes in your cells. We have great research to prove that. That's the truth of who you are. That's the truth, that miracle within you. That once you can get beyond your attention on your body, get beyond your attention on different objects and people and things at certain times and places in your environment, no longer anticipating the next moment or living in the past, a person can get trans, transcendental beyond their identity. Uh, they start passing through an eye of the needle, and that is their connection to that unifying field, that invisible field of energy that actually is connecting everything physical and material, and you can't use your senses when you're there. In fact, when you are there, there's a whole other set of rules to execute in. There's no place to go. How could you go if there's no space? If there's no space, there's no time. Every thought has a frequency, and being able to create from that place is why we're here. When you see a person 
feel whole, and we measure their oxytocin levels. It's not just a little oxytocin. The oxytocin is 200 times normal, and oxytocin signals nitric oxide, and nitric oxide signals a chemical called the endothelial-derived relaxing factor, and that causes the arteries in your heart and your lungs to literally open up, and just like your sexual organs get engorged with energy and fluid and blood, when that center is aroused, with the same intensity, you have a fullness in your heart. It's, it's physiological. And when oxytocin is released, it's impossible to hold a grudge. You cannot hold a grudge because you wouldn't want to trade this feeling by judging another person. You, you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to trade this feeling for any condition in your environment. And this is the beginning of unconditional. This is the beginning of our divinity. So when you have all this energy in your heart and oxytocin levels are elevated, this is a different consciousness. Now, the only thing you want to do is give. You want to say, I feel so amazing. And I want you to feel the way I feel. So here, I'll give this to you. Now you're being a part of something great. So yeah, maybe the sports car, it may be the new relationship, it may be healing your body, but then when that happens, now what? What are you gonna do now? Exactly. I mean, what are you gonna do when you have everything? What are you gonna do now? You're, you're, the next thing is, how am, I gonna, how am I gonna make a difference? We're wired to care for one another, to be kind to one another, to heal one another, to shine for one another, so to show other people they can shine. That's what the living organism does when they're not in fear. They're not in aggression and hatred and prejudice and all those things that create division. So when that person runs into that experience of the divine and their brain goes into an aroused state of gamma, they're getting a biological upgrade. I can guarantee you that some health condition will be eliminated because they just ran into wholeness and their body will become more whole. So they could do all the diets, all the chemotherapy, all the nutrition, everything, and they're handling that health condition matter to matter. And when you change that, anything in your life matter to matter, there's a long space between cause and effect, between it's thought dense. and experience. It's some, sometimes so long you forget what your dream was. But when you run into it, and you produce an immediate effect, now you're doing it in no time. It's happening in the moment. If you can capture that, and you see the brain go into these elevated states of coherent gamma patterns, 200, 300, 400, 500 standard deviations outside of normal, that person can't make their brain do that. That's a subjective experience that we're capturing objectively. And we say to that person, what was that? And it's inevitable. They don't, they don't have the words to describe what a mango tastes like. They don't have the words to describe what the divine is. You gotta just experience it. The illusion of limitation begins to change, and now all you want to do is crave the unknown. So people in our work don't get up in the morning and go, oh God, i got to do my meditation today. <laughs> no, they're not doing that. They're, they, their body is waking them up saying, get out of bed, because they don't want the magic to end. And when you start seeing the gap between cause and effect thought and experience closing down, you're moving closer to the divine. And when that happens, all the things you thought you want, you no longer want, because the overcoming process leading to who you become, nobody can take that away from you. So we practice it in, in our seated meditations, we practice it standing and walking. You're gonna walk as it, and you better be able to embody it practice doing it with your eyes open so when you return back to your light when you walk from your house to your car you're, walk, you're walking in the energy of your future and if you keep doing that it's going to become a habit people are going to start looking at you going something's different about you you know why because you're no longer showing up equal to the memory of you something's different about you you're unpredictable it's not what you're saying any longer, it's what you're, who you are. That person then is off their timeline. They're not headed for that same future. And all I want to do 
and a week-long event has bumped everybody off that timeline into a new future. Some, some people, huge degrees. You know, stage four cancers, tumors disappearing. You listen to that story of a person on the stage. Your next meditation, you are not going to go half in. You're going to go all in. That's all I want is I want people to go all in. I want to provide people with my greatest understanding of the truth and then numerous opportunities to experience it, nothing more. And when the magic starts to happen, it's beyond, way bigger than me, it's beyond my control. All I want to do is provide the environment where they feel safe enough to begin to create. Experience enriches the philosophical circuits in the brain, but when those neurons string into place, the brain makes a chemical. And that chemical is called a feeling or emotion. When you start feeling unlimited, when you start feeling worthy, when you are having experience that causes you to be more in love with life, it is that chemical release from the limbic brain that teaches your body chemically to understand what your mind is intellectually understood. So if knowledge is for the mind, experience is for the body, and in that moment the person's embodying the truth of that philosophy, and now they're selecting and instructing new genes from the experience because the chemistry that's coming from the environment is information. Proteins, and all of a sudden they start wearing a different body. Repeat it over and over again. Do anything over and over again. Neurochemically, you'll condition your mind and body begin to work as one. Do it enough times, now your body will know better than your conscious mind. Now it's innate in you. Now it's second nature. Now it's simple. Now you know that you know. You may not know how you do it. You don't know how you know how, but you can do it because it's subconscious now. So now that implicit memory, now you're mastering that knowledge. You're mastering the philosophy, you're becoming the knowledge. You're embodying it so much so that it's automatic, it's effortless, it's easy. And we have beautiful imagery to show that when a person's heart is coherent, like taking a big sheet and just flushing it, just whipping it like that, that wave that's created, the heart begins to send profound waves of energy into the brain goes into a creative state so the heart is the creative center and our heart begins to drive our brain into more alpha patterns more creative patterns at the same time when the heart gets coherent it's producing an ambient magnetic field up to three meters wide now you're more wave less particle more energy less matter you're emitting a coherent signature now that energy is frequency and that frequency carries information so one's energy begins to activate the heart and you're giving thanks for the event before it's happened. Your body's so objective, it's believing that it's happening to you because what is the emotional signature of gratitude? When you get something favorable, you receive something favorable, something just happened to you that you like, something's happening to you, say, I thank you. The feeling of gratitude, the emotional signature means it's happening to you, it's already happened. So it is the ultimate state of receivership how to give thanks before it happens, open their heart, and their heart's like a pounding of a drum or dropping a pebble in water, just producing these, this field. It's that energy, that creative energy can carry the thought of their health. It can ride, that intention can ride on the wave that could be wealth, new relationship, suffering, and the energy does not carry the thought of health, it carries a different set of thoughts. So people say to me, well, I can't open my heart. Well, I ask them, well, what, what do you practice feeling all day long anyway? Because you're so good at feeling something else, you haven't practiced feeling it. When we teach people this formula, they have to keep overcoming their thoughts, overcoming their impatience, overcoming the programs, overcoming, they come right up against it. Anything that's standing in the way between them and their connection, they gotta do business with it. And so as they start removing those veils, those masks, those layers, and they start crossing that river of change, and their heart starts to open a little bit, and they feel a little bit more, and they feel a little bit more, and their brain is coherent. Now they have a coherent brain and a coherent heart. The balance between the two is an exchange of information that's not coming from out there, it's coming from within them. 
and now they have a Wi-Fi signal. And now they're connected. When, you, when your heart opens and your brain is coherent, you feel connected to something greater. You don't feel separate any longer. Can you then get so good at it that no person, no condition, no experience in your life is going to move you from it? That's the name of the game. That's the Wi-Fi signal now. And so now, whatever you broadcast into the field is really your experiment with destiny. Not, not, for, the, not for the whatever you get, but for the fact that you created it. That's the fun part. And then, you know, so many people, they, I mean, people in our work that created so much wealth, you know the first thing they did? They gave it away. Well, of course they would, because they now believe they can create it again. Like, so now what? Now you just get good at giving. Like, it's no longer about that. You know, what do you want? You know, what do you, you're going to get that car, and then you're going to be like, you know, I'd rather drive the Mini. I don't really care about that whatever car. I'm just happy with what I have. When you're at that point where you're so whole that you don't care what people think about you, when you're so happy with yourself that you're free, you don't care what you look like, you're just happy with you, man, that's freedom for people. That's so much freedom. So it brings me great joy to witness transformation. And that formula then, I always tell people, don't work on your healing. Work on learning the formula. Once you learn the formula and get it down, the healing will be the side effect. And living in creation is such an elegant moment because you have to disconnect from everything known and you have to get so present that time is no longer of the essence. You are in the internal present moment. 